Wow, 1,600 on the nose. Nice. Okay, Atlantis, clear the vessel. Okay, bridge copies. For Mezzo to go on. What's that? Good for Mezzo to go on. Uh, yeah. Great. I just learned you can just hit the run button instead of use the mouse. Yeah. Oh, nice. Instead yeah. of playing with the mouse, that's great. Yeah. Only really took a couple years. Sweet. Nice lunch, everyone. I don't I I don't know the answer to that. We can uh, ask science is the right answer there. Good morning, science. Do you want these uh, triclops on just now? Yes. Or? Yes, please. Okay, coming on. 
This is an audio slate for dive H1998. UTC time is 140600. Mark. USPL looks good. USPL looks good. Okay. Excellent. Was there a concern otherwise? Nope. Oh, I just great. haven't had a chance to okay. <laughs> make sure that. Great. Yeah, no, it's tracking. We're both. Okay, we're at four And normally eight. I just like spend some time and like look at like a few hits in a row. Yeah. And I just wasn't doing that. Uh, five zero. Five zero meters for Argus. Copy that. Uh, I'll stop five zero. Give it a bump. Uh, Taking it from here, Van. Thanks. RV, are we okay to stop the ship here? Uh, yeah, we're okay to stop the ship. Great. And uh, we're headed down. Going down. Bridge, now we can hold the uh, ship here. Copy that. So basically, if we see a section that looks really awful, just move through it slowly, or? Yeah, or if you see it hopping, or, or Hopping, like okay. I'll be for the first two, two layers, three layers. I'm, I'm going to be back and forth looking at it. You can go a little bit faster, it looks like. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, radio channel two? Uh, channel one or two, yeah. Okay, great. I guess you'll hear either one. Can I see the, uh, thanks. Oh, don't be sorry, it's all good. Cool, thanks, TJ. Yeah, so I'm up to 23, yeah, perfect. Good man, thank you. Thanks.
going to slow down a bit so we can get through this crappy bit on the edge of the drum. Slowed to 18. Actually, slower than that. Okay, awesome. I'll just catch up and then yeah. I'll slow right, right yeah, through down. Yeah, just match it up. Great. Good one. Okay. <coughs> oh. Yesterday I noticed there was like a big spider in the hose. Just be aware. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But it must there must be like some interesting unique insects out here. Like a real spider or a sea spider? No, oh sorry, it was a real spider. It was just in the hoses and I like I went to grab the hose and it was like <laughs> Well that's the last time I'm going on the back deck. <laughs>
Hello and good morning everybody online. This is Brittany speaking, one of the SCFs, Science Communication Fellows here on the EV Nautilus. And we have just launched our vehicles in order to start their descent to our next dive site. So we are exploring an unnamed seamount, Site 11. This is NA-153, exploring the areas around Johnston Atoll. Our expected dive time is going to be about 20 hours today, and the maximum depth is about 3,032.79 meters. So this is the four to eight crew. Again, this is Brittany here. I have a lot of friends with me here in the control van, and we are going to be chit-chatting on our way down to this dive site. Again, it's over 3,000 meters below, so it's going to be quite a journey. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us. Good morning from Kentucky. Thanks for joining. And Kauai. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I was on an agent ago. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's scary. I was actually on a vessel once and the crane driver accidentally did it to the crane wire, but it was like this it was like this massive crane wire and we had to cut it back. Like there was nothing we could do. Yeah. I think he just he put the crane block on to the deck. Um it was like a nine hundred ton crane. It was quite a sizable crane. Um he put the crane block on and then just like the slack got into the wrap. So he tried to like take it up, take the slack up, and then it just like, it like bellied over. Oh, it was bad. I think they were changing out the crane block, so there was nothing he could have done, but it was just unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting uh, visitors online from all over. We have somebody from Ontario, Canada. Thanks for joining us. And we have Caroline from Norfolk, England. Hello, hello. So as we experience this blue water, as we make our way down to our dive site, feel free to write us in the chat if you have any questions or comments about anything. These conversations do tend to get a little bit um, fun. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, so again, feel free to join in. In just a moment, we're going to go ahead and do a round of introductions so you can get to know us if you haven't already experienced the four to eight watch before, so we can tell, us, tell you our names and a little bit more about us and what we do.
I can. Hello, hello. Good morning. One of my favorite ones is what color are you today? <laughs> um, but I feel like we could have some goofy one like... If you could be a flavor of ice cream, which flavor would you be? That's a good one. I'm sorry, was that sorry, Steve? Yes. <laughs> Starting off strong today. I know. It's real sassy this morning. It's ready for blue water. Well, I think that the ice cream options were fantastic. We owe it to our audience to provide a report after all of the the long uh, <laughs> long hints we've been giving all week long. I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Should we do a dive overview? Do we have time to do a quick uh, plan review? Sure. We have so, so much time. I think we have the time, Steve. <laughs> How are you envisioning this? Um, I was just going to talk through the dive plan. Great. Yeah. Let me know if you need to pack. Uh, yeah, we're okay. Actually, um, can we sh can we put out MB proc on uh, channel three? Is that allowed? Yes, it totally is. Okay. So I'm going to pull up MB proc back here so I can control it. I don't know what PC number that is. Neither, do, to rec. neither do I. Let me yeah. look real quick. Sorry. <laughs> I think I saw Pelagothuria just go by it. There it is. Yeah. First Pelagothuria of the season. What is a Pelagotheria? It's a pelagic sea cucumber. Cool. Yeah, so might see un another one. You Keep your eyes out one? for some, some pink uh, like a it looks like a jellyfish, but it's uh, it's not. It's bright pink throughout. Yeah, our viewers online are wondering if we're going to be zooming in on animals as we see them on the way down. Uh, I'd love to do that if we are able to uh, get a good enough zoom and if the vehicle is descending slowly enough to do so, then I think we can try our best to make that happen. Okay. You got it? Oh, that, that's yep. MB AC. Were you not looking for MB AC? I thought that's M what you said. MB PROC. MB PROC. Okay. We'll do MB PROC then. It's a very nice map last that was made last night of this site. Pri pre prior to uh, dive planning here, we really had some. Oh, perfect. Thank you. We had some pretty poor bathymetry that was just a, a, a transit line, basically, and uh, it was pretty patchy. Uh, it seems like they were moving from the southwest to the northeast direction, and so there was a lot of dropouts. Uh, but we're diving, we're, we're planning on diving, we are diving at this site uh, north and west of Johnson Atoll, 
uh, kind of between Johnson Atoll and where we were yesterday for our dive uh, at Site 12, but this one we're calling Site 11. Uh, this particular seamount was uh, thought to be actually much deeper um, than we had anticipate, anticipated, but it's actually uh, quite shallow. Uh, summit depth of just right around 2,100 meters, 2,130 meters or so. Uh, and the surrounding seafloor at more than 4,000 meters. <laughs> this seamount site is uh, was one of in, within one of the high priority regions that was designated by our uh, science shore community, um, as well as uh, folks within the Pacific Rim Islands Marine National Monument and NOAA, as a high priority site for exploration, um, because this northwest region had been really uh, not all, not not um, not well characterized compared to the southern parts and eastern parts of Johnson Atoll's uh, EEZ, or the, the EEZ surrounding uh, Johnson Atoll. Um, for the most part, our dive today is going to be similar in structure to ones that we normally do, trying to characterize a seamount from as deep as, as practical to the summit depths, um, as deep as we can do in about a 16 to 20 hour dive. So if you're looking at channel three, I have uh, the bathymetry we mapped last night along with our dive track over it. We're gonna be starting at a depth of right around 3000 meters in this uh, uh, de depression area in the side of the seamount towards the southwestern corner and climbing a uh, east-west, slightly uh, northeast-southwest trending ridge. Um, climbing that slope until we reach an isobath somewhere around uh, 2,700 meters. And then we're gonna parallel along some of those contours, gradually climbing through the 2,700 meter depth range um, through waypoint five uh, here in the, in the middle of the track. Waypoint five is in the middle of a saddle that may have interesting soft sediment biology, or it could be hard, uh, hard substrate. We're not too sure about that, but either way, uh, it might provide areas for uh, smaller uh, grain sized rocks like nuggets or nodules to accumulate and, uh, and uh, precipitate out over time. So we're trying to characterize a bunch of different types of um, microhabitats that are associated with the seamount from the slopes of the ridges, um, some of, of these uh, more depressed areas, uh, as, as well as the, the summit community towards the end of the dive. Um, our dive track today is 3,400 meters, 3,500 meters, somewhere between there. And um, provided normal up and down times, we should be trying to average about 220 meters per hour, um, which is a nice, uh, nice pace that allows us to move along uh, and at the same time uh, be able to get samples or zooms, whatever we need to, uh, to characterize the site. So that's the, the summary of today's dive. Um, but as always, we never know what we're gonna find, so we hope to have some exciting observations along the way. We should be reaching the seafloor. Uh, do we have a counter, the timer up? Probably. Probably by six, maybe 6.30 or so. Two hours to go. Hopefully we see some cool things on our way down. Thanks for that step-by-step uh, that -step of what we're planning on doing on this dive, Steve. That visual is really, really helpful too. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to the mapping team for their efforts and uh, doing the mapping lines last night that allows us to map this site as well as uh, putting out the products that allow us to visualize it. You're welcome. <laughs> as the sole representative <laughs> of the mapping team, we thank you. <laughs> 
She got there eventually. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start with some introductions. Um, so once again, my name is Brittany. I'm uh, one of the three science communication fellows on the EV Nautilus for this cruise. I am from Southern California. Hopefully everybody over there is doing all right. I know that there was like a huge storm and an earthquake that happened yesterday, so that sucks to hear, but it sounds like everybody I know is okay, thank goodness. Um, I work as a senior educator at the California Science Center. <clears throat> really, really, really fun place to work. We have the Space Shuttle Endeavor over there. So it's kind of interesting as I'm here on this ship, seeing what it's like to do deep sea research and then kind of tying that into the Endeavor and how it's been in this space 25 times. It's kind of an awesome parallel. By no means has the Endeavor been into outer space or deep space, but still. Um, I think I'm going to give us an option of a fun introduction today. So you can either say what your if you were an ice cream flavor, what would you be? <laughs> or, or if you're feeling a little spicy, you can tell us one of the craziest dreams you've had on the ship. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to go with the second one. So a few nights ago, I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream that my parents redid their house, but it was like super, super high quality, like, they made it really Disney themed. Like every room was like Mickey's house in Toontown or something like that. And it was, I was very impressed, but also very confused as to why they made that choice. So that was a crazy dream that I had a few nights ago. That sounds, are you sure that wasn't a nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a nightmare. Like I said, they, I mean, it was impressive. They did a good job. I was just really taken aback like, cause they're not particular Disney people at all, but anyway, that's me. <laughs> I'm gonna go counterclockwise today. So Logan, do you wanna go next? Oh my gosh. I um, sure. Yeah, hi everybody, my name is Logan Ossenjuk. Um I'm the video engineering intern, and I'm always sitting uh, in the corner, just out of camera, all the way over here. Um, and, Gosh, let's see. Um, I'm going to stick with the dream theme, even though the ice cream theme is, I'm sure some people will pick up. The funniest one, just because, like, dream logic. We've been talking a lot about Kingman and Palmyra, and I had this dream a couple <laughs> days ago where, like, I went to visit Kingman and Palmyra, but it was just me in a canoe. And, like, <laughs> hopped out, and I was like, oh, cool, I'm on Kingman. And then I was like, that was great. And then hopped back in my canoe, and, like, 20 seconds later was just on Palmyra. Hopped out, and I was like, oh, great. This is gorgeous. And they were, like, small little reefs, small little islands, and I just went to Kingman and Palmyra real quick. <laughs> Which is exactly how that works. <laughs> yeah. And in your canoe, it may have been. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, just a beautiful day on the yeah. ocean in my little canoe. Did you see any birds? <laughs> yeah, lots of birds. There was, yeah. It was also, like, in my mind's eye, I don't actually know what they look like, so it was just dense jungle, which I'm sure is not accurate. Nope, so. totally not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a dream. You can get away with it. Love some, love some good dream logic. Right? There you go. Love it. All right, Karen. This is your moment. My moments. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't recall any um, monikers I've received offshore. But my favorite my favorite ice cream is definitely cookies and cream. It's the, um, yeah, so that's my choice. Nice. Gabby? Um, yeah. Gabby? Gabby, you're uh, off SPL. Oh. <laughs> I'm Gabby and I'm on SPL. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Gabby. <laughs> Hi, Gabby. Thanks. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm on the ROV team. Um, and 
I cannot, for the life of me, figure out like which ice cream flavor I would inhabit, like like that I could actually be. Um, so I can go with the dream one real quick because I dreamed that a friend of mine was building an ROV. Yeah, it's topical. Um, <laughs> was building an ROV and he wanted the thrusters to go faster. So he tuned the electromagnet. Yes, yes, he did. Um, to be so strong that it split the earth in half. <laughs> <laughs> I was really getting into that story until, uh, until that moment. Split it right in half. Where was this ROV supposed to go? <laughs> Not a pole shift, right? I mean, it's just completely it was, split it, it was in half. Uh, it was, it was Tedarenko doing the tuning, so I don't know. Just Check use that. your imagination. Canada. 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 Yeah. The distant world of Canada. Canada. <laughs> also, RV, when you get a chance, could you power cycle the cinnamon cam? Yeah. The what cam? The cinnamon cam. That's what I thought. <laughs> you heard correctly. I believe that's what he said. Yeah. And that's the power cyclode. Samantha? Thank you very much. You, You're welcome. Have you done your intro yet? No, I haven't. Uh, Samantha Wishjack, navigator, also the operations coordinator for Ocean Exploration Trust. Uh, had a lot of weird dreams on the ship, but none for, not from a fit for <laughs> public consumption. <laughs> um, I think uh, I'll have to go with the Ben & Jerry's flavor half-baked, which is oh, that's a good fries one. and cookie dough. Yeah, so cookie, good. Yeah. That's about I really like half-baked. Kind of great at any time. There's also the frozen yogurt version. Mm. Very good. Someone on the chat is wondering if anybody has ever tried the Ube ice cream from Trader Joe's. Sounds delicious, though. That's a negative in, in the van. Not from Trader uh, Joe's, but I've had ube ice cream. Okay. I've had ube waffles. Mm. Those slap. Is that a fruit? What is I ube? Know. I feel like it's... <laughs> Never heard of it. Yam. It's, yeah, it's a yam, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It makes... Like, the waffles I had were, like, really, Purple. really chewy. Purple yam. Very fun to eat. <laughs> But yeah, I guess we're gonna all have to try ube from Trader Joe's. Is it like taro? Yeah, 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 similar, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Bronwyn, do you wanna introduce yourself and do the dream or <laughs> ice cream thing? Yeah, my name is Bronwyn K. I'm from Kauai in Hawaii. I um, am the ocean science intern for this expedition, so I'm I'm data logging when we're in the water, and otherwise I'm helping process samples and doing data stuff in the data lab. And um, at home, I work with the, I intern with the State uh, Department of Land and Natural Resources Wildlife Program, and I'm working with the seabirds and the wine goose, the nene. Um, I don't know, yeah, my dreams are like super interesting when they happen and then I'm only good to remember them like that day. And so, I didn't have any last night because it was a short night. Uh, my favorite ice cream, however, it never changes. It's Dolce de Leche, Haagen-Dazs. Mm. I would eat the whole point pint <laughs> with no regrets. Excellent. Amazing. I forgot about Haagen-Dazs. Do you want to lean just slightly left so you're on camera real quick for the people? There you go. <laughs> A premier, straightforward, and then right in the right corner is where the camera is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there are cameras everywhere. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Uh, Let's hear it. I'll go. Um, so my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead for the four to eight watch and also the biology science lead on this cruise, NA-153 to Johnston Atoll. Um, I am a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University where I study the biodiversity, biogeography, and ecology of deep sea corals, primarily from the Central Pacific region, um, the equatorial Central Pacific and, and parts of the, the North, Cent North Central Pacific. Um, 
my work focuses largely on trying to use um, newer tools like molecular tools in addition to morphological, uh, you know, traditional morphological taxonom taxonomic approaches uh, to identify patterns of biodiversity and more recently um, trying to use some of these molecular data sets to um, help develop eDNA tools uh, for characterizing the seafloor, uh, environmental DNA tools for characterizing the seafloor uh, in these types of environments. So my, uh, I guess, share is uh, ice cream, but I have I have two, and they're they're kind of either a really really high quality vanilla bean is excellent, uh, although if I'm not you know willing to go for that, um, I really like just plain chocolate chip, and it's very hard to find because it's always chocolate chip cookie dough, but just trying to find plain chocolate chip is a challenge. Uh, so I usually end up just buying my own chocolate, grinding it up in a coffee grinder into chips, and then adding it to really good vanilla ice cream. Excellent. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Hey, yeah. RV, I'm not seeing any response from the uh, cinnamon cam. Can you double check that? Everything in that pathway, Ethernet bottles, etc., is powered on. Have you ever had uh, the stracciatella ice cream? It's kind of oh, like a stretched chocolate, chocolate chip. Really good. Oh yeah, it's outstanding. No, I haven't. Sounds good though. If you like chocolate chip, you'll like stracciatella. I, I like, and the, the chip size matters. It can't be too it big. Does. It does. It does. And be the too density. Small. Yeah. And the, yeah, it's it's very yeah nuanced. Yeah. A good point. Also, can we talk about how hard it is these days to find a malted milkshake? <laughs> I like. I, I feel like it's a dying art. I go to different sure. places and I ask for a milkshake, and I'm like, "Oh, can I like can I have it malted?" And they look at me like, "What is that?" <laughs> and it makes me very sad because it's so delicious. But yeah, high quality vanilla bean. Milkshake with malt added is quite heavenly. Or maybe a nice root beer float. A root beer, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Nick. I'm up. You're up. Okay. Uh, my name is Nick Foresta. I am a geologist, a scientist on this watch. I come from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Department of Geoscience. And uh, I am working on a master's degree studying hotspot volcanism and using argon argon geochronology to try to reconstruct hotspot tracks. And uh, like Samantha, my dreams are much too strange to share on SPL. I like yours. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll stick. <laughs> the one I'll you shared with me was awesome. I, I'm gonna I'll, say. I'll stick with ice cream. All right. And uh, I'm just gonna have to go with something that fits my profession. So Rocky Road, oh, no. oh boy, Rocky Road is gonna gonna be my favorite ice cream for this for this watch. I should have seen that coming. What was yeah. I thinking? <laughs> I set myself up for that. Yeah, we should have known that was we gonna be it. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised nobody saw it coming. Yeah, <laughs> I thought Steve was gonna jump on that one before I, I had an I, opportunity. I too enjoy a Rocky Road, but uh, yeah, no, it's not my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Nick, I have a Hi. very important professional question to ask you. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about Pop Rocks? Pardon me? <laughs> How do you feel about Pop Rocks? I, I love them. Okay. They're delicious. They're and like geologically speaking? Both of them, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, volcanoes are kind of like Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks. <laughs> what are Pop Rocks geologically I know, speaking? Yes. I would say that they're like pyroclastic debris, you know, like um, maybe like some lava bombs. But you okay. need a more felsic uh, composition. Oh, Not man. I can find that in oceans. Those two cool. immediate words I don't know. Kelsey? Good morning. <laughs> More Kelsey. Also, I heard lava bones, not lava bubbles for a second. I was like, what are lava bones? Confusing. Lava bones. Very confusing indeed. <laughs> yeah. The chat appreciates your dad joke, Nick. So. Thank you. Yeah. I'm here all day. Yeah. <laughs> or more like. Actually, three only for yeah, only for three more hours. Trying to break Steve. <laughs> All right, so catching up on some chat questions. Do we mm -hmm. dream about ice cream? I sure do. At least I do. I'll speak what? for myself. 
I literally had an ice cream dream did yesterday. You? I did. After ice cream or like? It was before ice cream. Okay. It was a pre-ice cream dream. Um, it was great. And then my dream came true because I ate ice cream. Oh, nice jelly. Tumbling, tumbling jelly. That's that's a good one. Yeah. 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 I I like the consistency of it. Definitely. If you ever get a chance to try that, it's so good. Someone is asking if we have any bets on how many Dumbo octopus we're going to see today. 25. I would wager it would be zero, actually. <laughs> um, I mean, it's possible, but we're not as shallow as we were when we dove on the seamount where we saw those octopods. Are we doing prices right uh, numbers? Cause um, sure. I'll choose one. <laughs> All right, I say 25, Nick says one, Steve says zero. What are we betting on? How many Dumbo octopus are we gonna see? Oh my, just on this dive, like in our watch or the dive? On the dive. So over the next 20 hours? Yes. I'll go for three. Okay, Samantha for three. Are, are we documenting these somewhere? Um, I'm not. Here, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should. I'm looking for a pen. All right, anybody for anybody else up there for uh, Dumbo octopus bets? I'll go for I'll go for two. Okay. I really like the incredible optimism of 25, though. That would be the like wildest the thing I've ever seen. Oh, the, the wild, yeah, the <laughs> unabashed optimism of 25. <laughs> yeah. We'll just immediately land on a whale fall. <laughs> you know? It could happen. It could. The possibilities <laughs> <Just> are endless. <laughs> immediately. Normally, I would appreciate the optimism. However, in this particular dive, we're landing on a ridge, on a on the side of a slope. <laughs> so very, there could very have been a whale <laughs> that fell from the. Yeah, it could have. It could, it could happen still. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Who guessed twenty-five? I did. I also appreciate the unabashed optimism. I'm firmly standing by it. <laughs> Someone on the chat asks, wasn't there a very shallow volcano in the tropics somewhere close to land that was tossing lava bombs into the air? Do you know anything about that, Nick? Lava bombs. Not that one in particular, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, volcanism is a lot more active than people um, realize. There's usually active volcanoes going on somewhere in the Earth, kind of like earthquakes. Um, but I'm not sure about that one in particular. Either way, it sounds terrifying. Lava bombs in the air. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, somebody, uh, this was a while ago, they were asking, how did everyone get into this profession? Was it always an interest or did people accidentally fall into it? Excellent question. I get the sense we're going to have different answers in this uh, control van. Um, I would say I've always had an interest in it. Maybe not so much specifically deep sea, but just anything ocean in general. Um, it all started with Free Willy. <laughs> uh, so when I was... <laughs> When I was little, I saw the movie Free Willy, and it just completely changed my life. I just fell deeply in love with killer whales, all whales, all things ocean. And um, yeah, I think I was like five when I when I first saw that. So ever since then, been extraordinarily interested in um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, relating to the ocean. So I volunteered at a local aquarium. I did an internship in the Bahamas doing uh, coral reef uh, um, coral reef uh, research and evaluating the health of the reefs. Very, very different than the deep sea corals that I'm coming to find. Um, yeah, so for the vast majority of my life, I've been super interested in this stuff. So I wouldn't say that I fell into it, but um, yeah, and I'm pinching myself every day that I found myself on the <laughs> EV Nautilus. I think that is just, little Brittany would be very proud of me, so. Nick, what about you? I definitely fell into the, uh, this chair that I'm sitting in right now. Uh, <laughs> not literally, but I uh, decided to go to graduate school for uh, geochemistry. It was kind of the subfield of geology that I found the most interesting. And uh, there was a professor at UNLV who, uh, who was interested and uh, willing to work with me. Uh, however, he didn't have any um, access to samples readily available uh, for undergraduate research. Uh, so he reached out to another professor um, who is my current advisor, who just so happened to have some samples from uh, seamounts in the South Pacific at uh, Swains Island and uh, I just started doing some work on those, um, some basic uh, chemistry analysis. And uh, the previous uh, advisor left UNLV and uh, I was recruited full time to work with my current advisor, uh, Kevin Conrad. And uh, very gracious for that opportunity and uh, never thought that I would ever be out in the middle of the ocean on the EV Nautilus, but am extremely excited for the opportunity. Cool, thanks for sharing. So you said you were excited for the opportunity. How do you feel now? <laughs> <laughs> now that you get teased um, every happy day. Happy about the ice cream. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you get teased all the time. <laughs> I might say that it makes you uh, tougher, harder, more durable. Yeah. Like a rock. More angular. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a hard eye roll. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I'm on a seven or eight on the most hardness scale. <laughs> hard, hard. We're like barely an hour in. Things are getting a little rocky already. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Our social skills are ready so quickly. <laughs> Nick, do you ever feel like you hit a rough patch? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sure, all the time. <laughs> I feel Jumping like we're right in one right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. fortunately, we all live through a pandemic, and that provides us excellent skills to be at sea. <laughs> sure. Honestly true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am I'm glad we didn't have to do the, uh, the pre-dive quarantine uh, yeah, tradition. Yeah, that was, that, was that was a time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, at early, at early days in the pandemic, it wasn't clear. Sure. You know, how bad um, or how pervasive COVID was and how it, exactly it was spread. Uh, so, but we're, we, it, the fact that Nautilus was one of the few ships that was able to carry on through the pandemic through 2020 was extraordinary and is a testament to the hard work that everyone put in making sure that we all remain safe. So how long was your, was your ship, uh, well, was your quarantine before you came on ship? Two weeks. Two weeks in a hotel room, right? Yeah. Wow. 
and then the following year I did another cruise, uh, not not with uh, Nautilus, but uh, we had to do three days. So what did you do during those two weeks? I'm just wondering. Uh, a lot of cruise prep. Um, did some some tasks, uh, revising some of our protocols. Um, it was the first ROE cruise of the season where we were doing a lot of sampling. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of updates and uh, yeah, I watched a lot of movies, I would say. Yeah. Much like being at sea, you know, confined spaces, long periods of time. A lot of room service? No, actually, uh, we, uh, we had a chance to have some food delivered periodically. Um, you know, and then we, we had a, a small kitchen set up so we can cook for ourselves. Oh, okay. So it was more convenient. But it was it was very funny to be in a hotel room with all your shipmates, or a hotel uh, with all your shipmates, because the next room over would have, you know, your shipmates, and you know you were all occupied the same you know block of block of rooms, and you occasionally occasionally see each other in passing. <laughs> So then, Steve, how did you end up on Nautilus? Did you fall into it, too? Did I, how did I end up on Nautilus? Um, I applied for the Ocean Science Internship in the, I think it was the first year that it was offered, uh, or at least the first year that it was offered in, in the Atlantic. And um, I had the opportunity to come out as a um, intern for two cruise legs. Um, Back then, the cruises were much shorter, um, so we typically would do a transit uh, combined with a, you know, an exploration or ROV cruise. Um, also, back in those days, we had a really uh, interesting overlap in our responsibilities. Ocean science interns were not only uh, helping out with the science in the lab and, and setting watches as data loggers, but we were also helping to monitor the multi-beam mapping uh, that was going on prior to dives, but there was usually a coordinator of sorts uh, as well. But we got to learn a little bit about that, and I think that's really invaluable skills, you know, for trying to be a planner of deep sea dives is to understand the bathymetry and how we map seafloor. Uh, but yeah, after that, I came back um, because the the following year, the there was a development of a what we call the science manager and training program, uh, where we basically de devised and developed the program we have now, um, bringing on uh, either former interns or new um, new contractors to you know come in as science managers in training and helping to um, be trained by science managers and uh, pr you know pr propagate that knowledge forward. And I've been back ever since. Awesome, many a time. Mostly because I, I don't think anyone else can say the say the names of the species. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only value you? I bring. Well, lucky Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's one of the more difficult species names? I, I mean, I, I think they all can be challenging. Uh, He's the only one who knows. Oh, oh, okay. You're we the only one who knows how to say boops. Bo yeah, that's that's exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. What yeah. is it? Bo ops, bo ops. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a fish that is spelled b o o b p b o o p s b o o p s. 
Boops Boops is what we've been Boops calling Boops. it for years. It was, <laughs> named, well it it was named by Linnaeus. Yep. Like, he wasn't messing around. Uh, <laughs> but I think he was, actually. <laughs> 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 and apparently it's pronounced Boops Boops, which is Boops also Boops. funny, but I think I'm going to stick with Boops Boops. Boops, Boops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But we wouldn't know that if it weren't for Steve. What is a <laughs> <laughs> what is a boops, boops boops? It's a really like generic little silver fish. <laughs> oh, basic fish. Yeah, super basic. <laughs> I mean, it's cool in its own right, but like nobody would pick it out of a crowd. Aww. Except it's got this rad name. Yeah, I'm googling it now. Mm. Well, did you have a? There's a, like sort of an apocryphal story about the origin of that name, right, Steve? Uh, I I don't know that story. Oh, okay. No. Something something Linnaeus trying to like, I don't know, yank other people's chain, I guess. Oh. I don't know. No, I I, I now I want to investigate that. Yeah, I apocryphal, like I said, no mm. idea. It really needs a good apocryphal story. So, like, if you don't, you, if you can't find one, you could just make one up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Boops, boops, and the <laughs> apocryphal origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a children's book. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. This is how we teach children taxonomy now. <laughs> but aren't we all taxonomists as children, right? Doesn't everyone love to go yeah, out and pick up bugs? Yeah, which one of these things and, is not like know. the others? Which one of these things doesn't belong? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to dig for dinosaur eggs in my backyard. Oh my god. Did you ever find any? I found oh. a rock and it was round and I was convinced. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> you were born geologist. I really, yeah. I really wanted to uh, to discover fossils. I was more of a paleontologist when I was mm. when I was a kid. There's a lot of overlap, though. There. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, paleontology is considered a subdiscipline of geology, with okay. obviously a lot of uh, oh, awesome. uh, biology background. I was just Googling fun DIY Halloween decorations, and you can make a really cool looking dragon egg. We can sub dinosaur egg here for your interest around a styrofoam <laughs> egg. You push a bunch of tacks in, and then the little, little shiny flat tacks, you know, oh, yeah. the ones that are terrible that they fall, and then you step on them because they land upright and they go straight <laughs> through your foot. Yeah, anyway, those, should those, those, those should not be used for actual the flat ones? Yeah. yeah, they should be used to stick into a styrofoam egg shape, and then it really looks like a dinosaur egg. Are you telling me I get to see Nick as an egg with the, like <laughs> arms and legs sticking out? <laughs> Are you going to stick flat into him? <laughs> no, I'm saying he's going to have really cool Halloween decor. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love that Bronwyn. Ha. Huh. Oh yeah. She has photos over there. <laughs> look, at, look, that's gonna be you. Those unique. are really cool. Those are gorgeous. Gorgeous. I like Logan's interpretation though. I think I'm gonna be a dinosaur egg for, <laughs> for Halloween. Yeah, this for year. sure. I thought that was already settled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were we all agreed. Yep, Just like little arms and legs sticking out like I'm hatching. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the rules. <laughs> but I gotta get claws, right? Like, cause it's a dinosaur. It's I not mean, it would hand. be the cherry on top, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can hook you up with some claws. <laughs> so we're gonna make claws. this happen. Yeah. <laughs> I can hook you up with some claws. Claws, gosh. I don't know if I should be concerned or. <laughs> <laughs> happening over there? <laughs> <laughs> Just laughing into the microphone. I think we're getting treated to some origami. Oh. oh. This is the blue water life. Yeah. This is a lot of uh, 
All we'll right. spent so evenings at Denny's. Here we go. Our viewers that are just joining us, welcome. Um, this is the SPL Science Party Line as we are making our way down to our next dive site. Uh, this is the four to eight crew, and we're just heading on down, experiencing some blue water as we make our way down to our maximum depth of 3,032 meters. Um, some people are asking how long until we reach the bottom? And that's a great question. I not soon enough. Another hour and a half. Uh, an hour? An hour. All right, so in about an hour, we should be touching down and starting our exploration of this unnamed seamount. So again, we are exploring the region of Johnston Atoll. Right now, we are exploring the northwest part of it. And we do expect that this dive is going to be about 20 hours long. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about Halloween costumes, <laughs> making origami, ice cream, dreams. Contemplating how we got here. Contemplating fish. how we ended up here. Yeah, fish. Boops, boops. <laughs> If Nautilus is cruising on Halloween, do you dress up in costume? Sure yes, do. we do. That is the thing. <laughs> I've never been on the Nautilus during Halloween. This is my very first trip on the Nautilus. Um, hopefully not the last. But um, yeah, I've seen photos of the um, team and crew dressed up for Halloween. Steve, did you ever dress up? Uh, I'm sure I have. I've been on for at least a couple of Halloweens. What were you? I don't remember actually. Wow. We tend to make a lot of costumes out of trash that we find on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so I can think of the few I can think of I made a I made a gulper eel out of trash bags one year. Oh, no cool. way. Um, we also have a study supply of googly eyes on board, so that helps. Yeah. Uh, I made I collected paper towel rolls for uh, a few weeks and made someone a hydrothermal event costume. So all the paper towel rolls were uh, or all the paper towel tubes were the vent worm tubes. And oh my god. Little critters coming out of them. Uh -huh. That's amazing. And it was worn like was with suspenders. <laughs> I like how you say you collected the paper towels for two weeks as if you were foraging for them. <laughs> 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 kind of was. <laughs> uh, I've seen a methane seep costume, googly eye squid. Uh, someone was the sub bottom profiler one year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. People get very creative. Not on Nautilus, but I once made a Halloween costume that was a, a, a realistic representation of the rocky intertidal zone, complete with vertical zonation. Complete with yeah. vertical zonation. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> I used real, real algae, too. Was it, like, labeled? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I mean, okay. When you go to the rocky intertidal zone, it's not labeled, right? That's, hey, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah. No, it, it had uh, full-on zonation patterns of out macroalgae. That's amazing. Yeah. Now Bob comes. I, I just uh, stitched algae onto my wetsuit. And it was an outdoor party that didn't yeah. stink so much. <laughs> I think Samantha's claws are complete. She is now... <laughs> what is happening in this control van right now? <laughs> you have to wear these for the whole entire uh, the watch. Oh yeah. my gosh, you had the claws on you? That's incredible. Oh, he, oh, she made them out of origami. <laughs> Incredible. Oh my gosh, Nick, show them to the crowd. Yeah, you have to show everyone now. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so, we have an excellent uh, example here of in intertentacular sclerite. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, bring it back, Steve. And how they <laughs> extend uh, through the polyp. You know. <laughs> I am the polyp, polyp being the hand here. Yeah. 
Oh, wow, yeah. bring it bring it back. To, uh, it's impressive that you made that in science. such a short amount of time. Uh, yep. yeah, Who needs dive plans? Who needs dive plans? Those, those are old dive plans. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's half your Halloween costume already. Yep. I feel like it's a Freddy Krueger claw. A little bit. I can also see Dino though. Dino those those are totally Dino claws. <laughs> <laughs> The question is if you can continue typing and working. I'm going to do Tyrannosaurus Rex arms the whole shift, too. <laughs> if, if you oh. must, yeah. <laughs> if you must. <laughs> if you would like another hand of claws, I can do <laughs> full Good. set. Full set. Can you do teeth? Sorry? Can you do teeth? Teeth? You know, like sharp, sharp teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. I don't know if you want paper teeth. Yeah. These are impressively sturdy. They are. Can yeah, I touch you, them? Yeah. If you wear them for a full day. It's oh, yeah. Not bad. This is very impressive. Good job. Thank you. Many years uh, in blue water. Many years in blue water. That's probably true. <laughs> All right. So we are getting some. Uh, messages in the chat people are asking is it okay to ask a science question of course it is Please. yeah <laughs> yes it is i'm sure steve is very desperate for one at this point um so they want to know if there is a correlation between surface life directly above a seamount uh yes that has been found uh before particularly with particularly with large pelagic species like commercially fished um, fishes like tunas uh, have been found in uh, greater gr have been found in association with uh, shallow seamount environments um, even if the seamount is deeper there's still a, an association with higher densities of pelagic fauna possibly due to uh, locally driven um, Productivity, upwelling of of deeper, more nutrient-rich waters, for example, um, due to impinging currents and and uh, on the seamount environment. So yes, that is true. And there was a there was a good paper that came out a few years ago that had a really high resolution uh, model showing showing that productivity was higher immediately above seamounts. So try and find it. I should review that paper. All right, so we have some other questions. Um, do we have hydrophones on board? Mm. On board Hercules. I don't know if that means on board, yeah, the yeah. ROVs uh, or just on the ship. I, I have a feeling on the ship we probably do, but I could be wrong. To yeah, we don't have any hydrophones on board. Um, we have had in the past if there's a science team out with particular goals that require hydrophones, but uh, for the most part, the noise uh, from the ship or the noise from the vehicle um, is too much to make a hydrophone worthwhile. Um, if there was a hydrophone on Hercules, you would just hear the hydraulics all the time, which you can hear when uh, the vehicles are on deck um, as they're doing high voltage checks. So. Steve, have you been part of any cruises that have had a hydrophone out? Uh, yep. Uh, in 2016, I want to say, um, we were doing Olympic Coast. Oh, the, the first year. Seeps. Yeah, and we had a we You're deployed right. a um, hydrophone on the seafloor near the seeps to listen for bubbles, and we moved the ROV away, did our ops in another area, and then came back and picked it up. I don't know what happened to that data. Uh, I haven't seen anything about it. <coughs> Halfway there. Halfway there. That uh, conversation about hydrophones reminds me of um, 
I went snorkeling last year um, around uh, Maui, and it was like peak whale watching season, and I was able to hear the whales singing underwater. It was really, really, really cool. Um, it sounded like there were dozens and dozens of them, but of course sound travels a lot faster underwater, so I, I couldn't visually see any of the whales under the water, but hearing them all together was simply amazing. I'm never, ever going to forget that. Yeah, it is incredible to hear them underwater. Yeah. Especially from such a long distance, even if they're not that close. Yeah, so I mean, somebody told me before I went that I would be able to hear them if I just, you know, dunked my head underwater like two or three feet, and I was kind of skeptical. Um, but then I tried it, and I, yeah, absolutely blown away. Hey, Brittany, what do you call a bunch of whales that are singing? <laughs> All right, uh, let me think about it, let me think about it. Call a bunch of whales that are singing. I don't know, you got me, what is it? It's an orchestra. Oh, hey. okay. <laughs> okay, good night, everyone. Do you, do you That's sing? that joke, number two, <laughs> so far. An orchestra? <laughs> what about an or chorus? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> one up that joke. <laughs> what is got the his chest board uh, out here. What does a yellow fin use to carry tools around him? What was the question? Uh, what does a yellow fin use to carry its tools around him? Uh, a tunicate. <laughs> ah, cute. Nice. It doesn't really <laughs> make any <laughs> sense. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that does, I yeah. Love that. Tunic it. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Samantha, what was that? I'm not remembering it right now. What was that joke that you told when Allison asked you to tell oh. jokes? <laughs> um, what do you call a fish who makes you an offer you can't refuse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you call a fish a what? The, who makes you an offer you can't refuse? Um. The Godfather. It's <laughs> 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 the best one. <laughs> it's kind. <laughs> the Godfather. The Godfather. It's all the voice too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The presentation. <laughs> What do you get when you cross an abalone with a crocodile? A crocabalone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. Your science questions? Steve is dying back here. <laughs> you can do science trivia now. <laughs> no more science questions. I do have one more if that's permitted. My dad, my dad Always. sent me this. Literally literal. via it's a literal dad a, joke. Oh, an actual dad joke via a dad from joke a account <laughs> on Twitter, actually. From so, a certified dad. Um, brace yourself. Um, <laughs> did you know that it's illegal to laugh out loud in Hawaii? No. You have to keep it to aloha. <laughs> <laughs> I like Gabby's reaction more than the joke. <laughs> what was my re reaction to <laughs> 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 Love close? it. Was that close? <laughs> I love like Gabby's laugh. <laughs> what, this old thing? <laughs> oh, boy. Somebody please send us questions. <laughs> Well, it's still pretty early. What time is it? Uh, do we have breakdown of viewership by area of the globe? Can we see that data? We used to. Um, I don't know. I 
Should have access to uh Um, someone wants to know how large is Johnston Atoll? So we're not in Johnston Atoll proper, right? We're like kind of around. 100 so miles to the northwest. Yeah. 100 miles northwest. Close enough when you consider the scope of the Pacific. But um, yeah, Johnston Atoll is, is actually, a, I mean, prior to the um, construction of the military facilities there and the filling of a lot of um, uh, a lot of the island with dredge material you know to expand the the footprint of the island it was actually quite small but uh, the military occupation there for the better part of the 20th century was uh, Let's see, uh, resulted in not only buildings being built on top of the atoll, as well as an airstrip and some other uh, facilities. So it's, it's, it's not very island shaped, it's very rectangular, yeah. uh, very artificial. Cool. So we have visitors from California, the Netherlands, hello, hello. Florida, hi Ray. We have more jokes coming in. Uh, what is the most popular TV show in the ocean? Anyone? <laughs> I just Survivor. Saw the you just saw it? Yeah. <laughs> Whale of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Should we check on frog deck? See what see what the, the mood of, of deck oh frog yeah, is frog. today? Deck frog. Deck frog looks like it's having a great day. We can check on deck frog. Nick, say hi to your mom. Hi mom. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, somebody oh somebody from God. Dubai. Hello Dubai. Wow, Deck Frog is having an absolutely excellent day today. I know, actually. it's the first time. Yeah, she's yeah. been having such a good Show day. Show the world, Deck Frog. Everybody say hi to Deck Frog. Channel 3, That's a big smile. everyone. That's a big smile. <laughs> it's a splendid morning. Because we got in on time. <laughs> got in on time. Yeah, uh, Deck Frog is looking a lot better today than it was yesterday. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I did not see that until one of the launches and Samantha pointed it out to me and I was like, that's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Can't unsee Duck Frog. Can never unsee Duck Frog. No, nor would I ever want to, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the ship. Any science question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. I'm still getting more jokes, which are great. Also great. Yes. We'll take them. Um, have we, we ever seen SpongeBob or Patrick? Uh oh. Uh, mm, I wish. Oh, I thought that was. Oh yeah, I thought that was what the line. setup heard saying. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, you <laughs> thought that was a joke? I thought that was the joke. No, it's a serious <laughs> question. <laughs> We've certainly seen a lot of sponges. A lot lots of, of sponges, or lots of sponges and a lot of stars. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob is the deep sea one, where they like. Okay, so for people that don't watch SpongeBob or who haven't seen it, SpongeBob lives in Bikini Bottom, and there was an episode where he and Patrick went to a amusement park called Glove World. And after they went to Glow World, they took the wrong bus and it went down to uh, Rock Bottom, which is like the deep sea. And it's hilarious. And all of the fish down there are super weird and they all talk like this. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. That was, well, hold on. How, how do they talk again? <laughs> like this. 
I feel very immersed in the Can you do the rest of the shift like that? Just the rest of the shift? <laughs> Whenever I it's see a fish, when we, when we reach the bottom, I'll translate and I'll, I'll speak with a fish. Um, but anyway, excellent episode. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Am I the only one? I, I guess so. Sorry, right. sorry. It's fine. I wasn't allowed. <sighs> I do have another. Stephanie's the only one that understands me on this ship. What was that, Logan? I have another dad joke. Okay. Or another ocean ocean dad joke. How do you find electricity in the ocean? Um. How? We hope not. You just look for the current. <laughs> Can we just zoom in on Steve's face when these jokes are told? Because it's a great reaction. It really is. <laughs> you have to appreciate the effort, you know? It's it's about the effort. It's not always how it lands. <laughs> Why is the ocean always blue? Because it's sad. Because the shore never waves back. <laughs> Logan, I feel like you're getting a lot of glee out of these. I am. <laughs> it's a very gleeful I just expression. These up. <laughs> Did we do the turtle's favorite subject? No. The tur oh. What's the tur sea turtle's favorite subject in school? Um. Algebra. Oh. Hey. Algebra. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, we are getting some questions. You can give it like a Great. few clicks at a time. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe try like uh, one okay. five. Well, um, it's one of them. Will you please stop? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I'm it's loving it. Not a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a question. Will you please stop? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a white sea star that was collected. Was it yesterday or maybe the day before? Um, they think it was a different species. Uh, do we know anything about that sea star? Uh, the oh, wait, white see. star. I think yeah. they're talking about the, um, the, co the cookie star that was collected um, two dives ago. Okay. And uh, we, yes, we got it. We collected it, processed it, and um, we haven't examined it yet because... None of us are necessarily sea star experts, but we're, you know, we're reaching out to specialists who might be able to work on the material when it gets back to the museum. Although that was like the cutest sea star we picked up. It was only like two centimeters across. No way. Are you very, serious? Very tiny. It looked like a little star that you stick, you know, the glow in the dark stars you put on the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> totally looked just like that. <laughs> so cool. I only saw it in, um, pictures and to me it looked like a like ravioli yeah it was, it was very like blunt like edges it was not like it was like cartoonish honestly very cool but compared to the other ones we picked up on the last couple dives uh the starfish are kind of like slimy when you take them out of the deep sea but this one was not slimy Cookie star. All right, and then somebody else wanted to know. Um, <laughs> speaking of SpongeBob and Patrick, are there any sea stars that predate on sponges? Yes. Uh, I think Python aster species uh, are found on sponges. It's not clear. That, I mean, they're really associated with the sponges most often, but it's not clear if they're eating the sponge or if they're eating something that's growing on the sponge. So I think it's assumed they're probably eating some sponge material in that process. Yeah. Why does the seagull fly across the sea instead of the bay. Mm. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <'Cause> it's <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> we 
what was it? I don't think oh. I said it on SPL. Yeah. Because if it flew across the bay, it would be a bagel. <laughs> 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 Karen liked that one. <laughs> or maybe somebody's reaction to that one. I don't know. We all liked that one. Yeah. All right. Who knows the Hawaiian name for the green sea turtle? Oh, Honu. 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 So when you see a Honu, if it's your first time, it's a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good. I know that one. We haven't seen any, by the way. <laughs> we have not. We saw two when we left Oahu. Um, that was cool. Mm -hmm. But since then, no turtles. We've seen flying fish. We saw a couple of uh, sharks the other day. Some white tip. Um, oceanic white tip sharks. But no turtles. No turtles. Nick, this one's for you. Go ahead. <laughs> what kind of music sinks to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, Classic it's rock. heavy metal. Heavy oh. metal. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Exactly. Rock Heavy rock. Sink. That's classic rock behavior. Right? <laughs> You've heard of Murphy's Law, but have you heard of Cole's Law? Far more delicious law. I think that one hurt, mm. actually. That one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Another unpopular opinion, I don't like coleslaw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a not delicious law. It's certainly more edible than Murphy's law. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> what do you call it when two carbon atoms are dating? Mmm, interesting. Carbon dating. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was right there. Boom. Right there. <laughs> Steve actually left the bag. He's gone. <laughs> we lost Steve. <laughs> oh, no. uh. <laughs> All right. I feel like oh, that needs a slight rephrase. Maybe like when two carbon atoms are going steady or yeah. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely a better delivery for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, Mutual yeah. attraction. <laughs> This is actually a workshop in now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got it. Like, there's always room for improvement. <laughs> I mean, it still got us. We didn't. Yeah. Need <laughs> <laughs> I was staring right at you so, when yeah. I said it. <laughs> Somebody is asking, how long does it take to reach the bottom? Um, so it depends too on long. the depth. Far too long. <laughs> 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 yeah, as you can tell, far too long. Um, no, it takes, uh, on this dive, I think it's going to take about two hours. We are maybe about 40 minutes away from the bottom. Yeah, 37. 37, okay. Uh, yeah, so we launched this descent uh, at 4 a.m. And yeah, so we should be reaching the bottom in about 40 minutes or so. Maximum depth is expected to be 3,032 meters. So again, I, I kind of like to put that in terms of miles. Because for me, it seems to have a bigger impact. So 3,032 meters is almost two miles down. So pretty far. Uh, 3032. What did I say? Oh, he's talking to Gabby, OK. Oh, from high back. That was that was the um, yeah, the depth from the multi beam. Yeah. Okay. You didn't get too far past it. No. Like no, we're actually kind of lateral. Same contour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's so many jokes in the chat. I can't <laughs> keep <laughs> you just up. keep coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Someone hopes we see a Chana Cops on this dive. Thank you. I hope we see that too. We saw a juvenile yesterday. 
very briefly. It was <laughs> very scared of us and it's skittered away. But um, yeah, I hope you see a ton of cops. If whale fall is a thing, is there any other animal we can find in the deep sea? Um, That's a good question. Yeah. So, so the question is, are there other animals that we can find, like skeletons? I would. Uh, I, that's what I'm getting from that Large question. animals. Yeah, yeah like I mean, a sea lion or... Sorry? Like a sea lion or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as speaking to what Nautilus has found, um, yeah, it's usually marine mammals just um, for like sheer mass. Um, mostly we've found gray whale uh, falls. Um, we have found a few bones that, um, not not full falls, but a few bones that could be a, potentially attributed to smaller marine mammals, um, like a, a dolphin or a smaller whale. Um, and then we've also found a couple of bones that ended up being actually from land, land creatures. Um, but those, those were found closely, um, close to Southern California on the Channel Islands. Um, what what interestingly, land animal did you find? Sorry? I said what land animal bones did uh, you find? It was a, uh, like a, d a deer horn. Wow. I'm going to channel the species. But, okay. Um, uh, interestingly, in addition to whale falls, some of the organisms that will um, colonize whale falls will also colonize wood falls, so large chunks of wood that fall to the seafloor. So that's the other thing that is is somewhat well documented um, is uh, animals that, that find wood. Um, and so there's some overlap between whale falls and wood falls in those species. Steve's here, though. He might have other, uh, other ideas about... Uh, we were talking about whale falls and how we found some smaller marine mammal bones as well, but if there are any other uh, genres of, of things we find. Yeah, I mean, the, they're all related to chemosynthetic, they're all chemosynthetic ecosystems of sorts. Um, so yeah, they, they're probably more related to, you know, the, those types of environments are probably more related to, uh, you know, cold seep like environments uh, or hydrothermal vents than maybe the areas that we're going to be looking at out, out here, which are more um, reliant on planktonic marine snow debris to fuel their, their food webs. Um, because the, the microbial decomposition and degradation of um, energy sources, carbon sources in um, Marine mammal carcasses, or just animal carcasses generally, it provides the you know the basis of the energy that feeds you know things like bone-eating worms and and all the organisms that live around these falls. Steve, was it this year we found some osidax, some of the bone worms on something? I collect it hasn't been confirmed yet, but um, yeah, that's the that's what we're gonna try to take a look at. We've informed the individuals who might be most apt or able to help what um, what was it that we collected i, I don't know i i i, I think it was a bone piece i thought so too um but i didn't see the collection or actually you know what i can oh, look, i can look at the photos i think it was in kingman or palmyra and yep. it was a skull it was a smooth skull fragment some kind of bone, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even. I at the time, I don't think we could even determine which animal it came from. Um, no, it was that was this year, though, yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's. Let's see. Let me look up those photos and see if I can get a better look at it. Because when we're on shore, we have a pretty good resolution, but it's not as crisp as what you might see out here. And so, getting to look at the specimen up close might yield some different interpretations. We've talked about the Monterey Bay Aquarium's deep sea exhibit. They also have Osidex, the bone worms, on exhibit, which is really, really cool. Um, that was a, a first for for the aquarium world. That's so cool. Yeah, I feel like once I go back to that aquarium after being on this expedition, I'm gonna have like a whole new appreciation for all of it. Cause it like I would I went to that um, expedition or excuse me, I went to that exhibit 
um, probably a year and a half ago and was blown away by it. Um, but now that I have a bit more of a context of the deep sea and the different organisms that live there, really looking forward to going back. And a friend you'll visit. What was that? And a friend you'll visit. And a friend, yeah. It's me. Yeah, it's, it's you, you're the it's friend. It's me, I'm the friend. I'm the friend. <laughs> Yes, very much looking forward to that. That Can offer stands for everyone in the van. What was that? <laughs> that offer stands for everyone in the van. Not just me. All right. Yeah, let's all make a trip down to... Yeah. Come visit. <laughs> Karen will be there, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, baby people. Huh. Karen, I've been meaning to ask you, do you know Dr. David Cade? Um, I think he works in... Uh, I don't know if he works with Mbari or not, but he does a bunch of blue whale work in Monterey. I think oh. he, is he UC Santa Cruz maybe? Or Hopkins Marine Station? So Hopkins, oh, must be yeah, there. definitely Hopkins. I think he might live in Santa Cruz. Yeah, there's a blue whale lab um, at Hopkins. At Hopkins, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I haven't met him, no, um, and I, yeah. No. But they're doing like, Brittany can probably explain this better than me, but they're, when I sailed with him and the others in that group, they were doing metabolic calculations on blue whales. So like basically trying to figure out how energetically expensive it is to be a blue whale. And the answer is a lot. <laughs> you know, they're talking about like calories per like breath yeah. sort of thing. Because it's just so massive. It's just so much work to be a blue whale. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They described tagging them with um, like a Fitbit to be able to collect that data. <laughs> and with oh. a Fitbit with cameras. Yeah, yeah. A little whale-sized Fitbit. Yeah, <laughs> with like suction cups. Nice. Um, and like they'll have like a 180 degree view looking forward and a 180 degree view looking back and all these like accelerometers and gyros on it. Yeah. Uh, kind of like your phone. And yeah. it gets pretty amazing stuff, pretty amazing data. Very, very cool work they're doing over there. What's that? I said very cool work that they're doing over there. I think I, to I was talking to you about this, Gabby. Um, yeah, we had a IMAX movie about blue whales that just came out at the Science Center. And um, so a small team of us went up there to interview David Cade to get more information about blue whales and see how we could supplement the IMAX movie with some educational activities and wow. just learned so much from him and he's really, really, really nice guy. So just curious if anybody knew him personally on the ship. Steve, we got a marine snow question. Um, Somebody is wondering about the composition of marine snow on the seafloor. Does it become primarily inert? The composition on the seafloor. Um, so, marine snow is made it above, made up of um, primarily uh, a little bit of inorganic material, but also this this matrix of you know mucus and bacteria and, and biofilms and things like that. Um, there may be some other bits and pieces of things uh, that accumulate over time, including potentially microplastics. Um, I mean, it's not inert uh, on the seafloor. It's, it's a resource. So it, it can be used by animals, organisms as a source of energy. Matrix of goo and ooze. Yep. Would you say that it's mostly calcium carbonate in that sediment at that point? Uh, I, 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 it would have to depend on what kind of organisms were in the plankton that, that kind of uh, seeded or nucleated around the, the marine snow particle. Um, it could be bits of silica <laughs> from diatoms. True. It could be bits of calcium carbonate from, you know, whatever, name your plankton, forminifera, radiolarians, whatever. Mm -hmm. the crane chair. Just chills for a second. It depends on where you are. I would say uh, marine sure. snow is probably more diatomaceous in the higher latitudes, since they're more uh, a greater proportion of the plankton. Sure. <laughs> Whereas things like um, cyanobacteria are more common parts part of the plankton out here. <laughs> Uh, 
And then um, somebody wants to know if the Nautilus has ever been to the Arctic Ocean, and what would be the difference from the Pacific Ocean? I would imagine it'd be a lot colder. Yeah, <laughs> a lot colder. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think that's been the case yeah. that, that we've been to the, at least not since I've been associated with the program. Aren't there two icebreaker research ships that uh, frequent the Arctic Ocean or Antarctic, I should say? Yeah, in the Antarctic, the U.S. Antarctic program has the Palmer and the Gould. Um, yeah, those are dedicated Antarctic re research ships. Gabby's under the chat. <laughs> No, I, I heard Palmer and the Gould, and I was like, Gabby's entered the chat. So the target depth today is 3,032 meters. Mm. We should be there um, in about 30 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, pretty close. Maybe a little bit less. If you can see the the Herc uh, screen, the, they have the vertical velocity table up. Hmm. It's up here, but in the Herc, Herc, uh, oh, in that one. the Herc GUI, yeah. It's too far for me. I can't see. Yeah, I'll pull it up over here for you. saying you like set into something you're like oh this is great and then like all of a sudden it's it yeah I, yeah it's exactly yes i agree it's been like as we go down so somebody is asking what is the heaviest sea state you can deploy and operate rov hercules in so i'm wondering if that's the pressure no that's um surface conditions okay so like winds and seas oh the he okay yeah um, it's uh, usually favorable if the winds are less than 20 knots and the seas are less than Is it okay? a meter and a half, or you know, 1.6 meters. But above that, it, it gets you know very specific to the conditions of yeah. the yeah, because we have to take into account other variables like currents too that may be operating in the area. Mm.
and somebody is curious about, can you stay on for a double watch or is it mandated that you switch out? Um, I don't think it is mandated that you switch out, or let me should say this. I think that you can still remain in the van, uh, but you would still have to give the microphone over to the next watch person. Um, but we do have a lounge downstairs where many people are watching um, on the couches and stuff. Uh, so don't have to <laughs> don't have to stay in the van. Um, yeah, but I don't know if it's mandated or not that you have to switch out. But yeah, we do have um, four hour shifts. So again, this is the four to eight shift. And then next up is eight to 12. And then after that is 12 to four. If you're sitting like pilot, um, sometimes you will get like booted out of the seat just because after three or four hours, uh, you get tired and tired people make mistakes. Mm. Uh, so it's a little bit more like, yep, it's time to leave now. Yeah. Um, so we do, we definitely swap every four hours at the least. Yeah. Um, some, some ships and some shifts will have you swap out of that seat even sooner, three hours, two hours. And some scientists are on 24 seven, not gonna name who, but <laughs> might be in the room. What? <laughs> <laughs> I swear I sleep. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody's seen any I, evidence of that. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I go into my uh, my coffin and I yeah, close the <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I, uh, I, 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 I hibernate. With your arms crossed yep. like this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, somebody wants to know what is the wattage of the green lasers? Great question. Anyone know? That's an amazing question. I can't answer that. I don't know. Um, it's possible that it's listed on the website under um, instrumentation that's on Hercules. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Good science trivia, Steve. Trivia questions? Biology questions? Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any uh, good new geology words that we should know for this time? Yeah, what's the word of the day for geology? Uh, about diapir. Say that again? Diapir. Diapir? Yeah, it's kind of like diaper, but. <laughs> has an I instead of an E at the end. It's a, it's a buoyantly rising uh, uh, mass of rock, or uh, it could be anything actually. Even even salt rises, uh, salt domes will will tend to rise um, buoyantly through a mass because of their density differences with the uh, surrounding rock. And uh, you have to make sure when you're writing your research papers that you write diapir and not diaper, <laughs> because your advisor will correct you and scold you. <laughs> Don't want that. Is this a, uh, a, a personal experience? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just checking. <laughs> Heard it from a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we sure that's real? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> yes, because we don't have access to I know. <laughs> any yeah, sort of external communication. No, it's the, like no, no, no. Was the code word hidden somewhere in there? <laughs> Quick, get the, get the dictionary. <laughs> Encyclopedia Britannica. It's, it's in the land. Do you ever feel like you're exploring another planet? Absolutely. Um, Definitely yesterday. I feel like the geology of the site that we were exploring to me seemed really, really unique. Um, and there was a moment where there was very little marine snow and the water was very clear and it just seemed definitely like a different planet that we were taking a look at. 
Yeah, those were some interesting looking rocks, the jagged, you know, pillow basalts. Yeah. Did they ever, because um, I know that you were especially looking out for the col col columnar basalt, mm -hmm. right? Did, did we ever find those? Uh, no, I think if we find those, we'll find, we'll, we'll see it on, on our uh, cameras. Cool. Um, T minus uh, 10, no, 12 to the bottom, if anyone's tracking. T minus 12? Yep. ETA 12 minutes. All right. It's been a very, very fast two hours. Time flies when you're having fun, Steve. Mm -hmm. Steve, are you there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Tumbleweed blows across. What? Steve is having fun. <laughs> Loads. He's having the time of his life up here.